in peaceful community with each other. Prepare us to be witnesses of your love and forgiveness. Make us ready to work for you in your creation. For we ask this in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son. Amen. All right, kiddos, come on up. You're going to help me do a couple of things. I know, i got work for you to do. Isn't that cool? Oh, I know. <clears throat> Hello, boys. Hello. All right. All right. <coughs> don't sound terrible. But I feel good. All right. So I want to know what you guys got for Christmas. Tell me one. Tell me a couple things you got. A fishing pole. Um, nice. Two fishing bait. poles. Bait. And more bait. <laughs> and more bait. A tackle box. Oh my gosh, so is it regular fishing or ice fishing or both? He's going after a muskie. He's going after a muskie, muskie. okay. <laughs> you have muskie bait? I, I do have a muskie killer bait. Okay, so guess what? If you catch a muskie, do you tell everybody where you went to find it, to catch it? No. <laughs> that is the, is that the fisherman law? You don't tell them where you, you're just out somewhere on a lake, right? Because then all the fishermen will go where you were taking your fish. What did you get? I got a virtual reality goggles. You did? Those don't make you seasick when you put them on? Well, uh, they're actually for video games. Oh, are they? Oh. Oh, okay. And I also got a baby Yoda. Oh, baby Yoda. Excellent. What did you get, sir? You can hold your own mic. I got a beanbag chair. You got a beanbag chair. Is that where you're going to sleep? No? Is it soft enough to sleep? Yeah. Yeah. Beanbag chairs are still in. How many How many of us had beanbag chairs when we were younger? Look at all the old people raising their hands. I mean myself. <laughs> what else did you get? Um, a couple Lego sets. Ooh. And a Nerf gun. Ooh, all ready for the next game, Jesus Sleepover, eh? Gonna get rough? Yeah. Okay, so you guys got all kinds of cool gifts, but what is the best gift we find under the tree? This is a very simple answer. Anybody have a nativity scene? Do you know what a nativity scene is? There's wise men, there's shepherds. You forgot? So what is it? Here, you're the youngest. You get to open it up. See what the best gift is that God ever gave us. Open it up. What do you see in there? Whoops. Who is it? Jesus. Yay, that's the best gift God ever gave us, right? Because there's some kids that get all kinds of gifts. Go ahead, you guys, you guys are you going to preach? Yeah, go ahead. Can you keep it? No, that goes with my nativity set. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, so the best gift that God ever gave us is Jesus, right? And so I want you to remember that no matter what gift you got, fishing poles are great, aren't they? Muskies are great. Bean bags, awesome. But Jesus is the best, isn't he? So let's put Jesus. And virtual reality. <laughs> now, do you guys see these blankets we have up here? These prayer shawls? What I'm going to have you guys do is put your hand on one of them over there. Each one of you grab one. I want you to put the hand on great grandma's because we're going to give this to great grandma. So you can pick it up, actually. Pick it up and hold it. Is there anybody out there that would like to take a prayer shawl after we bless them to someone? Yeah? Zita, who would you like to take it to? Pardon? Who would you like to take it to? Well, I have to. A lot of family. Okay. So which one do you think you'd like? I'll have the boys hold it up. There's so many, I know. These were made by Joyce Corby. Hey, Joyce. Um, Jenna Otto and Deb Hostler. So they make these and they pray their way through them. Do you think you'd like a blue one or this one? Blue? Which one do you want? Purple. She wants purple. Purple. Which one's purple? This, no, that one goes to ground. Is this one good? It's got purple in it. That's all right. Is that one good? It doesn't. It won't matter. Okay, and Jeff, you want to take one to Rick? Oh, yeah. Should we give him? A, should we give Rick the scratchy one? I think that's <laughs> it's not scratchy, but this looks like Rick, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna have you hold this one now. Come together. Come together. Hold the hold the things right there. I'm gonna ask a blessing on these. Um, Prayer shawls, prayer quilts, and they're going to go to people that need a blessing. So let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you for these prayer shawls. We thank you for the hands that have made them. And as they prayed through them, we ask a blessing on each one of them to go for Zeta's family, to go for our Rick, who is, is sick in, in the hospital right now. Give him um, blessings and healings. And then to our beautiful and wonderful great-grandma, um, Lorene Duell. We just ask that you bless each person as they cover these themselves with these prayer shawls that they feel wrapped in the love of Christ. We ask this all in the name of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so I need you to take that to your grandma. You're going to take that to Jeff. He's going to raise his hand. Yep. And then you're going to take that to Zeta. She's going to raise her hand. Raise your hand, Zeta. See? Go ahead. And then you guys can go back where you came from. <laughs> go have a seat. Hi. Thanks for participating. And so if anybody else um, remembers someone that they think would, would utilize one of these, please take them afterwards, okay? Because we want to give them away. So, our scripture reading today comes from, no, I don't have COVID. No, you're all asking that. I do not. I just have a cold. You go to the hospital, you see people, you get sick, because there's sick people in the hospital, right? So, our scripture reading comes from Isaiah. I really feel pretty good. I just sound cool. Isaiah 7, 10 through 14. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz says, I will not. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thank you. Thank you. So when I was little, we went to um, Hudson's in Detroit, where Santa was. Anybody remember going to Hudson's? Hudson's used to be, is now Macy's. It was, yeah. So Hudson's in Detroit, we'd go to see Santa, and it was the best. And I asked my mom, how old was I? She said, somewhere between three and five. So let's say I was four. And I absolutely loved it. I would go, I would get my list ready for Santa, you know, and I'd get ready and I'd stand in line. There were long lines, weren't there, Mom? There was long lines. And, you know, believe it or not, there was, there was segregation at that time. Yeah, isn't that crazy? The um, white kids went to the white Santa and the African-American kids went to the black Santa. Yeah, that's how old I am. Anyway, <laughs> they don't do that anymore, which is a good thing. But anyway, so I got in line, I'm waiting, and I had my list in my hand, and I was so excited because I had written down what I wanted. It was so awesome. It was anything I wanted to ask for. And guess what? The best part was I didn't have to consult my parents beforehand. I could write down whatever I wanted or have my older sister help me write it down. And I brought the list. The sky was the limit. I could ask Santa for anything, right? You can ask Santa for anything, right? So the sky was the limit. Well, I want to ask you, what if God said to you, the sky's the limit? God said that to King Ahaz. We just read that, didn't we? He said, ask for a sign, right? So what if God wanted you to ask him for a sign? A sign to show to you that he's with you, that he wants you to believe in him? Can you imagine to ask for a sign from God to show you which way to go? To show you how to make decisions. Isn't that awesome? And yet, I think a lot of us just don't do it. We just don't do it. So, I want to talk about King Ahaz. Because this is an interesting story. So, I want to blend the story in with the sermon today. I want to first talk about why was Ahaz, um, why did he need a sign anyway? Why would, why would God want to show him a sign? So, i got to give you a little background. What was happening with the prophet Isaiah as he delivered this message from God? King Ahaz was um, from Judah. He was worried. He was afraid of two other kings in the northern territory. They were ready to dethrone him. There was the king of Syria and the king of Ephraim. Um, that was the northern Israel. And they wanted Judah to align and attack Assyria. Now, you guys in your history classes know the Assyrian army is big, was big, was ruthless, right? So king of Syria and king of Ephraim want to go and join with the king of Judah, King Ahaz, and they want to go take on the Assyrians. But Ahaz said no. And guess what these two kings do? Well, then you know what? We're going to take out Judah. So the king of Syria and the king of Ephraim are going to now come 
and take over Judah. They're going to take over King Ahaz's um, territory. But in comes Isaiah. And this is what it says in Isaiah 7. Do we have that? 4 through 7. This is before our scripture. Be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Remember, this is the prophet Isaiah speaking on God's behalf to this king. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood. He's talking about the king of Syria, the king of Ephraim. They will not destroy Judah. The sovereign Lord says it will not take place. It will not happen. There you go. So, isn't that exciting? So, he's so worried about these two kings. I mean, they are coming. The armies are coming. They're at the gate already. And the prophet says, don't worry about it. God says that you will not get destroyed. Judah will not be destroyed. I think that's good news. But some of us must learn to trust. And so, what does the king do? The king decides he's just going to worry and stress out. <laughs> so he now doesn't even believe what God has just told him. So this is where we come to this part of the scripture reading. He's just told him, don't be afraid. I, the Lord your God, will take care of it. Trust me and believe. But Ahaz is worried and afraid. So this is what God says to him again. Remember, King Ahaz has just gotten a word from God that says, Judah will not be destroyed. How many of you have gotten a word of God that says, be calm in your situation? Trust in God. I got this handled. Anybody out there? Yeah. And then how many of you don't trust in God? How many of you don't believe it? You say, yeah, I believe what God says. I believe God's word. God's word came in a manger, and I believe what Jesus said. Anything, because remember, whatever Isaiah says happened for Isaiah and for the king of Ahaz then. It also happens now because he's a prophet, and he's prophesying God's word. Okay, So remember that this is for us today, not that far back. It was for him too. It was for the king of Ahaz of Judah, but it's also for us. So a lot of us, we hear God say, trust me, I've got this handled, I will be with you, and then we don't. King Ahaz did not trust. So God says, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. Ask me for a sign that what I say will come true. Ask me for a sign. That's what he says to King Ahaz. So has God ever said, ask me for a sign? Have you ever said, I need to be hit upside the head with a two-by-four before I'll listen to God? <laughs> right? And then he sends you all kinds of signs, and you're like, I don't see any signs. And I'm like, well, that person just showed up and gave you a word. They just affirmed what you were praying. Or somebody showed up to visit you at the hospital. Well, I haven't seen God anywhere. What? <laughs> right? We do this all the time. We're just like this king, although this king was worse. So God says... I've already told you it's going to happen. They're not going to destroy you. Believe me. And he doesn't. He worries and he stresses just like all of us do. And God says, then ask me for a sign. And I want to tell you about King Ahaz because this is important. He was a descendant of King David. Okay? King David. And what did God promise? That you will always have a descendant on the throne. Okay? This is God's promise. Ahaz apparently has forgotten that. You will always have a descendant on the throne. So they're not going to overturn Judah because you've got to have a descendant. This is David's son. You've got to have a descendant of David on the throne. But Ahaz has forgotten this. In fact, Ahaz was a bad king. He built altars high above to worship the sun, moon, and stars. He had fortune tellers, and he had them speak to the dead to tell his future. No palm readers out there, thank you. No going to mediums for your information. <laughs> hey, you can if you want, but I just think Satan's working through that. King Ahaz was searching for miracles and signs in all the wrong places. So he was building towers so he could get up really high and worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. And he'd call in his fortune tellers and he'd say, tell me my future. Will, will these two kings, will they defeat Judah? God's already said they're not going to defeat Judah. 
His father David already told him there will always be a descendant on the throne of God. There's all kinds of proof that this is going to happen, that he will not get destroyed. And yet, what does he do? He builds a tower to pray to the sun, moon, and stars. How many of us pray to the sun, moon, and stars? Nobody. Oh, but you pray for your 401k to get where it needs to go. <laughs> and then when you get a blessing of 20% or 18%, you don't tithe that. Or maybe you do. I was at a church once. I won't tell you which one. And they had a fund. And it made like, I don't know, 12%. And so there was that extra money. And it was the kind of fund that you could pull from and utilize. And do you know what? The treasurer said to me in the finance chair, well, we can't use that money. I said, that's a blessing from God. You better use that money. If you don't use that money, we can guarantee we're going to have a negative balance next year. It's a blessing. I'm just saying, we may not build towers and sit down and worship the sun, but we worship all kinds of things. We worship good health. Don't we? Everybody wants good health. And there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you don't get good health. Sometimes those aren't the cards God gives you. Sometimes it's hereditary. Sometimes we've abused our bodies. Sometimes we just don't get, we just don't get the good stuff. Right? And we worship good health. And we try all we can to get old and to stay healthy. And sometimes that doesn't happen. So King Ahab was not a good king. So God is faithful to his promise and to the descendant of David. And he tells Ahaz, ask me for a sign. Ask me anything. The sky's the limit. He is giving him the opportunity to ask him for a sign. This is the prophet telling God's word. Ask me for a sign. Wouldn't you love it if a prophet came in and said, ask me for a sign and God's going to give it to you? How many would want that? Yes, we would. Here's his opportunity. One commentator put it this way. God tells King Ahaz, quote, turn your face, turn your mind, turn your hope upward, and I will show you a sign there in the sky. I'm the one who put the sun and the moon and the stars there. Quit worshiping the sun, moon, and stars. I'm the creator of all those things. I put my rainbow in the clouds as a sign of my covenant with creation. I gave Moses signs, and the people believed. I worked signs in Egypt to make it known that I have the power to save. I can save, and I choose to save. Believe it. I know that you need a sign. I am ready to help you believe. Ask me for a sign. No brainer, right? So, I would like to say that King Ahaz asked for a sign, but he did not. This is what the king says instead. No, I will not ask. I will not test the Lord. Oh, he's pulling out some scripture, isn't he? I will not test the Lord. He, that's baloney. Do you know why Ahaz says, I will not test the Lord? I will not ask for a sign because he had his own plans. He had already made his own plans. Second Kings 16, 8, and 9. Got to know the Second Kings part. Listen to this. And Ahaz took the silver and gold found in the temple of the Lord, offered to the Lord, and in the treasury of the royal place, and sent it as a gift to the king of Assyria. He's trying to butter him up. The king of Assyria complied by attacking Damascus and capturing it. King Ahaz already had his plan. He already had his plan. I don't need a sign, God. I got this handled. I know exactly what I need, Lord. You don't need to be bothered. I know exactly where my kid needs to go to college. I don't need to pray about that. I know exactly what I need for this job. Don't worry about it. I got it under control. Yeah, there's a promotion. I'm not going to take it because I know God's got better plans for me. I had a friend once who um, had a big move that she was trying to make. And uh, she didn't know if she should do it or not. And, you know, I'm like, well, write down your pros and cons, doing that normal stuff. And then I said, apply for it. Well, I don't know if I want to. Ask God for a sign then. Ask God. Pray to God. Well, I don't know if I should apply for it. I said, listen, apply for it. If you're supposed to get it, you'll get it. If you don't, you won't, right? She applied for it. She got it. Obviously, that was what she was supposed to be doing. And she prayed. So what I'm saying is King Ahaz has his plan already in place. 
He's going to butter up Assyria. He's going to get Assyria on his side. He's got it all worked out. And the worst part of it is, is he took the money and the gold that was offered by the people, that was brought in when God had said, I will defeat these other nations and take their plunder, right? This is what they did, is they took the plunder to show the power of God, and he took it and he gave it to the nastiest king in history. The king of Assyria was nasty. He was mean. He was ruthless. He didn't care about people. They sacrificed children. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? They'd go through the town and they'd slice every head off. Kids and everything it was gruesome. It was terrible. It was the worst enemy of God's people. And here is King David's son offering him God's treasury. Isn't that crazy? I think the other reason that King Ahaz didn't ask for a sign is not only did he have another plan, but I think if God showed him a sign, he might have to give up his plan and go with God's plan. And I think this king wanted it his way. I think if God showed him a sign that he might have to stop consulting his mediums, he might have to stop justifying building another tower so he could pray to this other star that he just saw. I think that if he asked for a sign, King Ahaz might just have to believe in this God of his father. He might just have to believe. Sometimes I think that we pray too small. Amen? I think sometimes our prayers are really tiny. Well, God, if it be your will. Yeah, that's a great way to pray. That's how Jesus prayed. But if you remember, before Jesus prayed in the garden and said, let it be your will and not mine, what did he say? God, take this cup away. That was his deepest desire, is not to have to go to the cross. He knew what was waiting for him. What is your deepest desire? Don't be afraid to ask God for it. Don't be afraid to ask him, what is it that's deep on your heart? This is what he's saying. Ask me for it. I will ask me for a sign that it's going to happen. I've already told you it's going to happen. Ask me for a sign that it's going to happen. What's deep on your heart? Sometimes we say, I'm not worthy enough to ask God for this. King Ahaz didn't think that way. He had a plan. Some of us are planners. Anybody got a planner already for 2023? I know my daughter does. <laughs> she does. And there's nothing wrong with being planners. Planning is good. But sometimes God has other plans. And the problem is, is when we try to still go with our plan, and God has clearly told us not to, and God has clearly told us what way to go, and God goes even further and says, I'll send you a sign, and we still won't ask for the sign because I've got my plan. And you know my story. It took me four years to become a pastor because I wouldn't listen. La, 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 la. <laughs> I mean, literally wouldn't listen. Would not listen. I had my plan. I was going to work at the TV station, I was going to retire from that. Then I ended up working for Julie. <laughs> and we had fun, didn't we? We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. So, but what I'm saying is God's got other plans. If you make plans, that's fine. I think it's great. But if God wants to show you a new way, you better go that way. Because here's what happened. So, he says, I'll send you a sign. King Ahaz says, no, nah, I don't need it. It's okay. And what happens? I don't even know what happened. Oh, I know what happens. <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing. God sends a sign anyway. And he tells King Ahaz, the, what, what does it say about the virgin birth, right? Yes, here it is. Okay, so King Ahaz says, no, I'm not going to, I don't need your sign. I got my own plans. But he instead is real pious and says, no, I will not test the Lord, your God. <laughs> You're believing David's God. It says in verse 13, Hear now, you house of David. Now God is speaking to everybody. Because his king is not a believer. It is not enough for you to try the patience of men. Will you try the patience of my God also? God's not happy with Ahaz. I said I'm going to send a sign. You are a descendant of David. I know you can't remember the covenant I made with your father, but I remember, God says, I don't go back on my promises. 
There will always be a descendant of David on the throne of God's people. And then he says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. So this is what God says. I don't care. I'm going to give you a sign anyway. No, I will not test you, Lord. Do you think that brought honor to God? No. He says, I'm going to send you a sign because I don't care about your plan. So what I'm saying is go ahead and make your plans. Go ahead and try to keep putting your plan, that square peg in the round hole of God's plan. And I can tell you what, he's going to send you a sign, an even bigger sign. And this sounds really nice of what was going to happen. So listen to this sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and we'll call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Don't go to the manger yet. Stay with King Ahaz. Okay, don't go to the manger because this prophecy was for King Ahaz too. And what happened? They don't know who the woman was, but there was a woman who was pregnant. And you think, big deal. Women get pregnant all the time. Exactly. God's going to show you a sign through everyday life. Watch for those miracles every single day, whether it's a simple note from a coworker, whether it's someone who drops off a thing of little, you know, banana bread, or whether it's someone that has made dinner for you. How many of you have thanked your spouse lately for dinner that they made? Good job. <laughs> Only one person raised their hand. Two. I'm just saying, a lot of us do a lot of cooking. I do not. My husband does. So I have to thank him a lot. And sometimes I forget to do it. He, he's going to send a sign through a woman who gets pregnant. And it's going to probably be a very young woman. It's a virgin will give birth to a child. This was, this was, an, this was an average thing going to happen. But some theologians believe it might have been someone in his harem. It might have been a worker of his, a servant of his, who was known as not being able to get pregnant or whatever, and all of a sudden she was going to be pregnant. It was an unnamed woman and she was going to give birth to a son to show that God is with us. God was with Ahaz. That was going to be the sign. God is with us in the manger, right? That is the sign. God is with us so we might believe. God is with us when it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe sometimes, isn't it? God is with us, and he promises that he's not going anywhere. God gives a sign. It's a sign of salvation. It's a sign that God's still large and in charge. It's a sign that God's power is bigger than our own unbelief. Ahaz was not a believer. He was not a good king. And I can tell you what, if this doesn't make him believe, oh my gosh, crazy. Anybody know the rest of the story? What happens? Me either. I didn't read any further than that. <laughs> Look at Brown. Everybody read Second Kings for joy? <laughs> One of those A kings? One of the, and it's so funny through the history. Good king, bad king. Good king, bad king. Good king, bad king. He's a bad king. So his son took over. But let's not give this king a hard time. We can be just as faithless as Ahaz. When we're afraid, we try to figure it out for ourselves. God says, wait, and I'll deliver you. How many of us like to wait? How many of us can't wait for the sermon to be over? <laughs> I'm moving slow today. I don't know what to tell you. As I was saying, Joe reminded me that I had to preach today. <laughs> Last night, I'm like, what? Is it Saturday? <laughs> Sunday came quick, didn't it? <laughs> Holy moly. Some of us refuse to ask God for signs. Some of us refuse to even see the miracles right in front of our face. God sends miracles. He sends signs. He has proven over and over and over again. In our lives, it will just open our eyes and look. If we'll stop relying on our own plans and wait on the word of God. I know, I'm just as bad. The birth of Christ, because we know then in Matthew it talks about the virgin will give birth. We're talking about the virgin Mary. But this was prophesied about a long time ago, and we just think we automatically jump to Jesus, which is fine, which is a good thing since we're at Christmas time. But Ahaz needed a word today for him. Ahaz needed to believe. We need to believe. God has a word for us today. The virgin will give birth to a child and she will call him Emmanuel. God is with us in every little tiny decision you make. 
So don't think it's too small of a decision to take it to him. Well, you know, it's kind of a small thing. I don't want to bother God. I'm sure he's busy. God's always busy. He's up 24-7. But he's not too busy for you. Do you know I have people that will say, well, don't tell the pastor because she's so busy. Tell the pastor. <laughs> I will make time. I'm not too busy to do what it is God's called me to do. And you know what's so funny is that I go to the hospital, go visit one person. God knows that I'm busy and he knows I got a lot of stuff to do. And all of a sudden I see somebody and says, oh, so-and-so is an ER. Can you go see him? Sure. Boop, boop, boop. One time this happened to me. I went to three different places. I went to go see someone that had just gotten over surgery. Somebody took me to ER. Then somebody took me up on the heart ward and they were all parishioners that had just happened to be there. And I just, and you know, it was like, oh, I think I'll go get myself some coffee. You know, so in between, I was getting coffee, and I saw someone there. And I went, you know, so what I'm saying is when I'm not scheduled, I go for one thing, and I'm not scheduled for the rest, God will fill in the schedule. But how many of us fill the schedule in, and then we don't see where God's working? I know. I've done it. I used to have one of those stupid planners. What was that guy's name where you write down all the arrows of baloney? What was it? The Franklin. The Franklin Day Planner. I hated that thing. I like to see a month in advance. I want to know where I'm going. This is one day, you know. You then put the arrows for things you didn't get done. It was so confusing. I had to throw the thing out. We went to, I mean, our, our, my boss made us go to this, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is horrible. Look at all the stuff I didn't get done today. I got to move it with arrows. Arrow, arrow, arrow. That drove me more crazy. <laughs> Anybody have the Franklin Day Planner? Okay, so I know I'm old, but me and Rob are the only ones. For a short time. For a short time, and that was it. You got to make room for the Christ. You got to make room for Emmanuel to be with you. Christmas isn't over. Christmas is here for a word for us today. That means go ahead and make your plans, but be ready for God to rework those plans. Get ready for him to show you a miracle. But you got to be open to it. You got to be willing to ask for a sign. And don't be thinking that your sign isn't big enough to ask for. Because God loves you. He knows what your deepest desire is. So ask him. And he'll make it come true. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that Emmanuel means more than just Jesus in a manger. It means God with us at all times. Even when we're obstinate. Even when we try to shove you into the back seat and drive on our own. Even when we overbooked our schedule, you still send a sign anyway. Because you know it's hard for us to believe. You know at times we can be faithless. But that's why you're called the faithful one and the protect, perfecter of our faith. So we thank you. Keep sending those signs and may we have eyes to see it. In Christ's name, amen. amen. So now's our time where we do um, prayers. So we just lift up a hand and offer a prayer, and then we have someone writing them down. So remember online, hello online people, um, go ahead and type in your prayers. So what do we have to pray about? Yeah. Um, Rick Bertoff and his family, yep. so they're healing. Um, Lynn Reeves is my brother-in-law's mom. She's starting to be very forgetful. Oh, so Lynn Reeves for yeah. dementia. Yeah. Okay. And blessings of Christmas. Blessings of Christmas. We do want to pray for Rick. Rick is in um, the COVID unit. And so he um, was doing okay, and now he's kind of wavering a little. So, um, but he has gotten some, can I say what he's gotten? Yeah. He's gotten, a, what do you call those things? Antibodies? Yeah. So they give, yeah. So that's a positive. Um, so we want to keep praying for him. As I said, I got work for him to do. Larry Otto, I'm like, hello. Larry Otto does start his chemo tomorrow and radiation at the same time, and then they're going to go every other day. So they're going to they're going to nail him right off the bat because they want to, you know, they want to get rid of this stuff or at least contain it for his lung cancer. So we want to keep him in prayers. Jane, I would just like to thank the Lord for bringing this family of mine here, and for them bringing you here. It's so good to see you. I'm headed back to Wayland on Wednesday, and yeah. I will. But uh, my granddaughter and her husband are headed back to the Navy tonight. And yes. 
and serving on these big ships and protecting our country. We're very Thank grateful. You. Thank you. And Nancy always prays for our military every single Sunday, so thank you for serving. We appreciate that. Other prayers? Ben. I got a friend, Amy, who's in the hospital with heart issues and COVID. Oh, no. Okay. Young gal, I'm assuming. Younger. Younger than me. <laughs> Same age as you. Okay, so for Amy, for COVID and heart issues. Diane? Uh, continue help for Trev Aylesworth. John, Have you gotten an update on Trail? Yeah, he's out of the hospital. Oh, he's good. out for 24 hours, and then he told John, "I gotta go back in because his wife's having a baby." Oh, <laughs> okay. So he got out to go have the baby. Okay, but he's out, so he's, he's doing out. better. Yeah, he's doing good. He's okay. a little scary, but yeah, because he has COVID too, or had it, and his wife's nine months pregnant, so now she's having. Well, uh, but she was doing okay. They knew that she was going to need some antivirals right away, so Trav is doing better. Anything else? Did you have another one? That was it. Bob? Brother Stephen. Stephen for health. Thank you. There's been improvement to his back. So oh, so improvement. He's able to stay lifted about one two days ago up in the air twice. So. That's good. Yeah, he's got people on his left side now, but uh, he's been getting some weeks. Good. Good. Monday, go on into uh, physical. Oh, good. That's a good sign. Connie, did you have something else? Um, Bill said. Who? Bill Salagi. His, <coughs> his funeral. His family. And his, for the family of, spit it up, Connie, for the family of <laughs> Bill Salagi. <laughs> yeah, and for the best of his mom. And I believe that that um, funeral is going to be in Como. Oh, no, it's going to be at the Tabernacle, I think. There's some kind, I think they, visitation is going to be at Como, so. Look online, you should be able to find out that and go there and support Vesta. I will not be in town, so if you can go and support her, that'd be great. Mary Lou, family. How is she doing? She's, she's had a road to go down there. She's still at home? Yeah, she's still at home. You should have refusing to go to the doctors, yeah. eh? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Zena. Uh, my sister Donna Lee, her oh. family, where she does live on this farm that they have. Okay. Uh, all had a cola. Oh, no. And she got it. Oh. They're all doing good. Oh, good. Okay. For answered prayer. So, answered prayer. F? I have a prayer for two very special friends. Okay. I need, she, they need prayer. Okay. And I have an uh, unspoken. And an unspoken. Thank you for two friends and for unspoken. Joanne? I'd like prayers for the Woodward family. So who passed away? Passed away. Leo. Leo Woodworth. Woodworth. For the family of Leo Woodworth. He was a cousin to yours? Exactly. And probably then half the people in the church. <laughs> <laughs> They're all related. No, I'm only related to him. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Troy Hilden's sister did pass away, Tandy. So um, that will be a visitation on a Saturday, January 8th at, um, I think it's, there's not a service, but it'll be up at Reynolds from 10 to noon on January 8th. So to show uh, tr uh, Jen and Troy our love, um, if you can make it, that'd be great. Jamie? Um, I wanted to bring one to the but I wanted to One worker at the house? They were her. Okay. Daughter having a big nut ball. Okay. And I want you to pay for somebody else too. Somebody else outside your house? Okay. All right. It's a good thing God knows all that. Other, other prayers? Keep Lorraine Duell in our prayer. And Fred? Yeah. Dan? Did you do a her recovery for Terry and Bev? Terry and Bev, as they recover from surgery. And? And for Rich. For Rich? Yes. Answers. Answers, yep. Yeah. So oh, it's my a, uncle, John Dobson. John Dobson? Healing. Mm -hmm. What happened to John? Ellen's husband? Yeah. What happened? He fell. He oh. fell, and he's got a pacemaker now, and he <coughs> broke his arm, so. Again, I know nothing. <laughs> okay, so we'll pray for John Dobson.
bless him. And Ellen, who's caring for him. He's your uncle? Well, imagine that. <laughs> I learn something new every day. Small community. Small community. Anything else? For you. For your. Oh, yeah. It'll go away. Gives me a reason not to listen to my husband. He can't hear. I can't hear. Nobody can hear. Perfect. All right. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for listening to our prayers and hearing our prayers. And Lord, I just pray for those who are in the hospital with COVID. I pray for Rick right now. Just cover him in your mercy and grace. May you bring him back to us. May he heal. May he get better. Pray for those that can visit him. I pray that they will go if they are able. And uh, just offer him a word of encouragement and to show him that we are a miracle messengers taking God's miracle to him. So we just pray for him and for all of those that are battling this. Some of it, it's easy. Some of it, it's hard. So be with him. Pray for those that need answers still on some of their procedures or some of their tests. Pray for answers. Pray for Larry that he's strong enough to withstand the chemo and radiation and it does what it's supposed to do. You pray for all of those traveling back and forth, back home, travel mercies for them. And Lord, we thank you for teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so um, before we stand, let's say a prayer for our offering. Remember, you can also click online because Ben will put up the offering and pay by PayPal, or you can um, send it to P.O. Box 395, Kingsley, Michigan. Let's pray for our offering. Holy God, we thank you for your presence with us in this place, warming our hearts. May we bring your presence, your light, into the world through these tithes and offerings so others will feel your warmth in their hearts, too. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, please stand with us.
19th, and we're going to bring you back on January 21st. Yep. Start practicing. Yep. It doesn't say bring a snack, but bring a snack and have some fun. Yep. Anyway. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for reminding us that you show us signs even when we refuse to ask for them because we've made our own plans. So help us to see you as we plan, but may we be willing to change when you show us a different direction. And may we share it with the world. In the name of Christ, amen. All right, there's more cake downstairs. Just what you need. <laughs>